Sabine Wren training to become a Jedi has taken many fans by surprise. However, this path has long been set up. Get ready for this because she's about to become the next force-wielding Mandalorian. I need her to be herself. But some fans aren't too happy with the idea. She is not an acceptable candidate. Let's kick things off with why Ahsoka is training Sabine, how she's following closely in Tar Vizsla's footsteps, and where her journey will be when Thrawn rolls into town. The first three episodes of Ahsoka have essentially focused on the Imperial effort led by Morgan Elsbeth to return Thrawn to the known galaxy. Whilst on the other hand, we see Ahsoka investigating just what the Imperials are up to, which then brings the band back together, Sabine and Hera so far. And what's more, we also learn that Ahsoka has trained Sabine for a certain period of time in the arts of becoming a Jedi. Now that goes along nicely with what Dave Filoni said the theme of the Ahsoka show was, and that is of Apprentices and Masters. But there's only one catch here, Ahsoka isn't your typical Jedi, and Sabine definitely isn't your typical Padawan. When we pick up with Sabine, we know that she's being recognised as a hero of the Rebellion, but ultimately she's still longing for Ezra to return. And in a time between Rebels and the Ahsoka show, she also continued her lightsaber combat training with Ahsoka, but she also began to learn the ways of becoming a Jedi until they had a falling out. And at this moment in time, Sabine is pretty much living as a recluse, almost living in a self-imposed kind of exile, and she's given up on all of her Jedi and lightsaber combat training. That's only until Ahsoka visits with a glimmer of hope that may bring back Ezra. And at this point in time, Sabine is very much back in the game. But she jeopardizes the whole mission of finding Thrawn and bringing back Ezra when she's defeated by Shin Hattie. Now it does make one wonder, and I guess Sabine's also thought this as well, if she did keep up her lightsaber training, maybe she wouldn't have lost the map to the new galaxy, or she wouldn't have given it up so easily. Which then leads Sabine to jump back into things and begin training with Ahsoka once again, as they continue their search for Thrawn and Ezra. Now I just want to say here, Sabine training to be a Jedi, if you haven't noticed, is the exact opposite of the path Grogu's taken, with him training to become a Mandalorian. Now, a Mandalorian Jedi, or a Jedi Mandalorian, whatever way you want to say it, it's not not a common thing through Star Wars histories. However, it is something us fans have spoke about a lot in recent years thanks to the Mandalorian and there was plenty of theories on who will wield the Darksaber and go on to rule Mandalore before we got into Season 3. A lot of people were asking, will Grogu be the one to unite the Jedi and the Mandalorians? Or is Din Djarin Force sensitive? Could it actually be him? Many fans have questioned in the Ahsoka show why Ahsoka took on Sabine as a Padawan. Now we know from Hu Yang that she's not very gifted with the Force. In fact, she's the worst candidate to become a Jedi in the last 500 years. Effectively, the whole time Hu Yang has been training Jedi Padawans and teaching them how to construct lightsabers. But it's in episode three of the Ahsoka show that she actually reveals why she is training Sabine. If you can read between the lines here, she goes on and I quote, I don't need her to be a Jedi. I need her to be herself. I admit it is cheesy when she says that, but there is a little bit more to it. Why would Ahsoka want Sabine to be a Jedi when she doesn't even consider herself one at this present time? Yes, we've heard other characters call her a Jedi, but Ahsoka left the Order. Although she uses the Force for good, she doesn't have that title, like, let's say, Luke Skywalker has. Now, if you listen closely to what Ahsoka actually said here, Sabine needs to be herself, it made me wonder, well, who is Sabine? Who is Sabine's self? She's a Mandalorian, but there's another defining trait that makes Sabine who she is, and that is her love for art. And this really is the penny-dropping kind of moment. Which other Mandalorian also appreciated the arts, wasn't particularly gifted in the Force, but trained to become a Jedi do we know about? I'll give you a clue. He created the Darksaber, and that would be Tar Vizsla, the first known Mandalorian Jedi. Now, he was a very strong, formidable Mandalorian warrior, and he was Force-sensitive, but he wasn't as gifted as his peers but the thing is, and it's a theme we've seen occurring in the Ahsoka show, he didn't give up, he was consistent, and he continued his training until he reached a proficient level. Now, by all accounts, Tar Vizsla wasn't Force pulling Star Destroyers down to the ground, but he used the Force to enhance his Mandalorian combat abilities, which already were very good, which then put him a cut above the rest of all the other Mandalorians. Oh, and he liked poetry as well, which of course is another form of art. Now, what's interesting here is that Sabine has already proven herself capable of wielding the Darksaber thanks to the training she received while wielding the blade from Jedi Kane and Jarrus during Star Wars Rebels. Of course, if you've watched The Mandalorian Season 3, you'll know the Darksaber has now been destroyed, but let's be honest with you, it could be reforged or salvaged with Sabine using parts of it to construct a new blade altogether. After all, we've seen Rey rebuild the Skywalker Saber in Episode 9. And that was actually split into two, it wasn't just crushed like the Darksaber. So if you remember back to earlier this year, during The Mandalorian Season 3, we discussed the possibility of Din Djarin or Grogu being the next Tar Vizsla figure, 
but neither materialized. What if that title is actually reserved for Sabine Wren? Now, she's not gifted with the Force, but with training and dedication, she will become proficient. That is why Ahsoka is training her. But upon digging in a little bit deeper to this rabbit hole, another revelation hit me. And it's been right there for us all to see the entire time, even before the show began airing. Do you remember the first few Ahsoka trailers where they incorporated a text, Warrior, Outcast, Rebel, Jedi? And I think that was actually from the first ever teaser trailer, but then they replaced it with a shortened down version. Now, that could describe a possible path that Ahsoka could take. And a lot of people, including myself, did believe that was referencing Ahsoka and she'll become a Jedi once again come the end of the show. But it could also be about Sabine, which come to think of it now actually fits better in my opinion. Mandalorian warrior, rebellion leader, Jedi Padawan. Now, one of the big criticisms of the sequel trilogy was how they just made Rey so powerful with very little training. I mean, yes, I know some people will say she is a Palpatine and he is very powerful, but she would also need training to learn these powers. The gifts can be there from birth, but you need to learn how to unwrap them, how to use them and utilize them. And for me, I think Filoni's really showing the struggle that Sabine's going through with her own Force Jedi training. But as we know, not everyone's sold on the idea of her wielding the Force altogether because she never really demonstrated any kind of Force ability during any other time we've seen her in animation. But what if I told you, with Sabine coming from Clan Wren, that actually made her part of House Vizsla and perhaps foreshadowing her future, she was once taken to visit a statue of Tar Vizsla, the first Mandalorian Jedi, as a child by her father. But not only that, she has already proven herself able to wield the Darksaber already. So to me, her path to date seems to follow along the lines of Tar Vizslas himself, with his influence seemingly being constantly present in her life. From being under House Vizsla to visiting the statue and then wielding the Darksaber, and now she's learning to wield the Force. And of course, let's not forget, they both had an invested interest in the arts. It's almost like she's some kind of reincarnation. Now, I firmly think she's going down the path of being the next Jedi Mandalorian, and perhaps her and Grogu will link up at some point in time and train together. But my question for you guys is, how would you feel if Sabine was to become the next Mandalorian Jedi? Let me know down in the comments. Remember to like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel to catch some more. I'll catch you in the next one. This is the way.